And good morning. It's time now for Coach's Corner, live from McDonald's on Madison's Hilltop. I'm Tim Torts. We do this every Saturday morning from the McDonald's across from the Madison High School. This week, we're going to talk Shaw Girls Tennis. I have uh, co-coaches Natalie and Chris Hill in. I'll talk to a couple of kids here in at least the uh, last part of the program. Thanks for tuning in this morning. And uh, coaches, thanks for being here this morning. Thank you, Tim. Thanks for having us. Uh, let's talk. Let's, and I, before we get into this season, I always like to go back and reflect a season ago. Let's let's talk about a season ago. But before we do that, let's go back a little bit and talk. And I always love talking to coaches about what in the world brought you into the coaching world and in the sport of tennis. Go, go ahead. <laughs> go ahead, Chris. <laughs> well, I started playing at my mother's encouragement many many years ago mm -hmm. um, and been playing for since I was about 15 or 16 years old and uh, played for Shaw back in the 80s and uh, played a little bit in college um, and Steve Sims had asked me to coach probably I think when Megan my daughter Megan was a freshman mm -hmm. so at Shaw so I started helping Steve back then so um, then carried on till today but uh, or presently, but um, it's been a really good experience. Been uh, yeah. very. Uh, we've had some successful teams and a lot of fun times. Yeah. So um, glad to glad to do it. Yeah, Natalie. I started in my teenage years as well, taking tennis lessons with the Madison Parks Department, mm -hmm. and um, played at Shaw all four years, and did play college tennis as well. Um, I've always enjoyed the sport. It's been my favorite sport. Um, and then I started helping at Shaw, I believe, with the junior high program at first, um, and then kind of moved on to the high school program mm -hmm. and have really enjoyed working with the girls. And it's it's been a really strong program for many years and fun to work with with the girls. What 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 brought you guys, both of you, kind of into the into the tennis world? What was the the connection for you guys in order to play tennis? Um, all I, many years ago, all I played was basketball mm -hmm. and baseball. And right. mom said, you're going to do something a little different. So um, <laughs> you're going to have a little diversion. That was my mom's saying. Yeah. So right. uh, rather than to um, take golf lessons or piano lessons right. or anything like that, I took uh, tennis lessons up at Madison High School over mm -hmm. here. And uh, I thought it was a, a pretty neat sport because you could hit the ball as hard as you <laughs> wanted. And, right. Uh, you were all by yourself, and there was no uh, nobody to blame but yourself. Mm -hmm. So, um, so that's what happened. Yeah, yeah, Natalie. Well, I remember Carolyn King. Um, mm -hmm. A lot of people probably remember her, and Beth Elston. They were um, tennis coaches in the Parks Department and real involved, and so they kind of inspired me too. And then I liked watching professional tennis on TV, and it was a sport you could do individually, but you're still part of a team as well. Mm -hmm. So I always liked that aspect as well. And so you get into to coaching. So let's let's kind of talk about the the aspect of playing and, and coaching. How how different that is to to be a player and then kind of you know transfer that into the coaching world to try to teach others to to do the same thing. Well, as a player, um, you know I have a certain amount of intensity mm -hmm. uh, when I do things, and I think you have to be careful sometimes that. Uh, people have different uh, goals and aspirations for themselves sure. so um, you have to modify and kind of revise your way of thinking sometimes but inject a little bit of that mm -hmm. and, re and remember that when you're trying to teach someone or, mm -hmm. or tell them something right. so um, to try to reach a happy medium but right there is a difference between playing and coaching mm -hmm. there, um, for sure, right? You know, so yeah, I've I've had, I've had coaches tell me, and there's been a couple of them that have told me over the years that you you can be a great player. It's more difficult though to be a great coach because you want them to play how you played, and sometimes it's very very hard to make that transfer. And the the communication mm -hmm. and um, having them. Um, uh, you know, motivate themselves and and reach that point of motivation too is mm -hmm. is is kind of tough. And I recently listened to an interview by th with Bobby Knight, and mm -hmm. he, and he uh, an old interview uh, with Roy Firestone, and mm -hmm. he he pointed that out. Uh, mm -hmm. He was an average player at Ohio State, right. but, but he had a real passion for basketball, mm -hmm. as you know we all know. Sure. So yeah. it is. It's a it's a um, 
you have to reach a happy medium and come to an understanding yourself, I right. think, and, and what kind of kids you're dealing with, too, because everybody's different. Sure. So, Natalie, you, you take a, a kid that comes to you that, that wants to play the sport, doesn't know much about the sport. Where do you start? Well, it's funny you would ask that question because we've had a couple <laughs> new players this year, brand new, and um, luckily there's two of us because you really need two coaches when you're dealing with two levels of players or maybe even three. But, um, I mean, we started with hold, how to hold a tennis racket, <laughs> you know, how to hit a ground stroke. Mm -hmm. um, but it's amazing what those two new players have done in such a short time. Right. I mean, they have learned how to play basic tennis. Mm -hmm. So we've had the gamut of we have experienced players down to a couple brand new players yeah and and i would think that seeing them and showing them how to improve their skills it's it's got to be rewarding coming back it, it was rewarding and it is and last night we had a good practice and i played doubles against a couple of those young players and they were making some great shots and it was nice cool weather and they were having fun mm -hmm. and you know we have to remember with the sport too it's not a just about winning it's mm -hmm. also about having fun and the process of learning this is your guys' second year is that right a third year Second. as as head coaches. Second, Second together. Second mm -hmm. together. Okay, uh, let's go back and reflect on a year ago. Then your your first year together as head coaches. Kind of talk about your season. <laughs> well, last season, um, you know, the last three seasons for sure, we've been on the winning end of things. Mm -hmm. um, we've had more depth of talent. Um, so this has been a bit of a growing year mm -hmm. compared to what we've had. So. Um, it's been a little bit more challenging this year, I guess, as coaches, um, but it's still been rewarding. Um, but I'm so glad we've had the successes we've had, mm -hmm. but we are trying to instill in the girls we want to continue those successes. So mm -hmm. we don't want to settle for mediocrity, you know. We right. And is, is, is tennis a sport you can you kind of pick up in the spring and then put it away for the year? Is it something you need to play year-round? It's like anything else, Tim. You know, you hate to uh, – you want the girls to play year, not year round, right? But, but the much that you can play, right. you know, that's outside and and. Uh, but it's evident those who try and mm -hmm. and and who show effort more than just in the tennis season. Mm -hmm. And this year, I would say, unlike other years, you know, we had to we've juggled the lineup trying to figure out which is the which is going to work most right. effectively you know yeah. and we've and i think we've done that the girls have tried hard um and we've gotten some decent combinations right. of where we think we can be competitive mm -hmm. um and that's that was a cha that's been a little more of a challenge this year than in in years past when you when you plug girls into different spots are they how, how does that work i mean are they are they receptive to that or are they reluctant to do that well i think sometimes we do ask them if they have a preference on sure. singles or doubles, um, but sometimes we tell them we have to put you where we need you. Mm -hmm. um, they may think they're not good at the net, and they are. Or So we've had pretty much the girls accept where they want to play in general and, and have moved a few around but have settled down to a pretty stable lineup now. So. I think it's just trying to work with what the players' talents are. Right. I want to mention what you guys just mentioned, or what you mentioned, Chris, but you and Natalie have a little bit different philosophies and how that kind of works with coaches. Well, <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. Um, I believe in uh, – I tell the girls this – constantly to drive the ball I don't want to I don't like to see lob type mm. shots uh, loopy yeah. you know I want to I want them to drive the ball and hit the ball hard and be aggressive mm -hmm. and um, sometimes that's not exactly the strategy uh, that Natalie has but well, maybe my, we can reach a happy medium <laughs> my, my strategy <laughs> is to hit with pace but you have to be consistent too mm -hmm. so if they are hitting with pace and hitting the ball out you're not going to win either. Mm -hmm. And like, for instance, at the net, I like to lob it over him or pass it. Mm -hmm. And Chris has a different philosophy when they're up to the net to volley. And your and your philosophy is? Well, I was. If you hit it close to them, mm -hmm. they have a tough shot. Right. So, and if it happens to make contact, you can always say you're sorry <laughs> and move on, and we're all friends. That's so. right. <laughs> a a tough shot is the one that's hit right at you. It is. And, it's, and the harder it comes, the tougher it is to hit back. 
That's true. Okay. Yes. Yes. I, 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 I would agree with that. Yes. That, that yes. would be tough. From, yes. from the but if you bit. lob it high enough, they can't get they it can't either. They can't get it. That's <laughs> right. It's over their head. They can't go get it unless they're really fast. And So, yeah, I, I understand that. <laughs> Let's go back and, and then kind of reflect on how the season went a year ago. Um, your expectations, were they met? Um, in the beginning of the season, I don't know what Chris feels, but they weren't quite met for mm -hmm. me um, but we have improved as the season's gone on we've won more matches as the season's gone on um, so our record is like six and eight mm -hmm. but we really should have won a couple matches in sure. there too um, so it's coming to where it's starting to meet my expectations you and it as a coach sometimes a lot of patience comes into play that's true um, because uh, you think a player should be progressing a little more mm -hmm. than what they are and um, you always have to consider uh, and I've learned this over the years um, that what do they have going on in their personal lives sure. you know whether you know academics or uh, some other you know situation so uh, if they're not doing well on a right. certain day you have to really be observant of right, that and right. uh, consider that you know because we all have good days and bad days but I feel like we're 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 getting in a groove now mm -hmm. it's the season's gone on and right. that's what you're supposed to do right that you're supposed to get a little more comfortable playing your best tennis at the end of the season towards yes. sectional time um, that's what every coach uh, hopes for and what not what every coach gets sometimes but it's what what every coach hopes for what do you work on now towards the end of the season as you go into sectional next week that that what do you feel like this team needs to improve on strategy mm -hmm. like doubles working with strategy on the doubles um, with singles um, especially like our number three singles we're working on just consistency keep the ball in play mm -hmm. put pace on but keep it in play um, our upper players, one and two singles, we want them to be aggressive and kind of add more things to their games, but also still be consistent as well. This team, this program has been uh, sectional champ multiple times, um, and I can't remember how many in a row. Three? Three in a row. Um, what's it going to take to make a, make a fourth in a row? Um... I don't think luck uh, hurts anything. Uh, that, you know, just like winning an NCAA championship, right. that that helps. But uh, I think, as Natalie said, we need to, to work. And, and fortunately, we have several days of practice here. Mm -hmm. right. and, and we are in a groove. And we have improved without question. And with a break here and there, I don't, you know, anything can happen. Sure. But the girls need to be consistent. And they, most importantly, um, uh, which many times I don't think they do uh, in, in any sport, believe you can win. Right. Go into it with a winning attitude instead of saying, well, I'm going to try hard. Mm -hmm. I'm just I'm going to participate here. We'll make a good showing. Mm -hmm. uh, you've got to play to win. And um, I, that's what we have to do. That's what we're going to do. Well, and, and again, as we mentioned earlier, sometimes your mentality transferring to make their mentality is really hard to – there's, it's a tough bond to make sometimes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yep. And it, it's and it's a competitive sectional. You know, we right. play all the schools we play. Obviously, are are bigger than we are. Sure. Have more numbers, and mm -hmm. and uh, it should be competitive. But it always has been. You you look at at the the team from start to finish, and I think we kind of hit on this a little bit earlier. But the improvement this team has made throughout the season to where they're playing their best tennis right now, um, is it is it to the point where they're they're kind of complacent with where they're at or, or do they still have drive to get better no I think they have drive we had a really good practice mm -hmm. last night um, I've seen our singles players have a lot of drive to improve their game our doubles teams um, you know we've got Kelly Hesse and Lena Leatherman at number one doubles they're really trying to work on their strategy um, we've got a number two doubles team that's pretty pretty solid now so no, they're not complacent. Yeah, and, and that's good. You want it, You want that drive. And just like, you know, Tuesday we had a match against uh, Scottsburg, and, and you don't know what to expect. Sure. You always go into it, uh, like I said, uh, hoping you win, thinking you're going to win, and we almost did. Mm -hmm. And and that was a, it was a little bit of a surprise to me, uh, And but we should have won that. Right. Uh, we had some 
very consistent play with one and two uh, singles um, and uh, you know doubles fell a little short but it was a you know they're pretty strong it was a learning experience but our three singles we almost pulled that out right so it was uh, you know a nice surprise yeah so and see anything can yeah. happen and, and that's what you again that's what you want to see as you head towards the end of the season mm -hmm. they may not come out victorious but at least they battle and, and, and mm -hmm. fight to the end yes, yes. Uh, you want to mention team members yeah, we have um, seniors on the team. We have Kelly Hesse, who's with us today. And um, we have Kristen Snodgrass and Isabel Lewis, who are seniors. Um, and they also play another sport. I know you know Kristen plays sure. softball. Mm -hmm. Isabel Lewis also runs track. And then I want to mention Kate Grody. Um, she would definitely be playing in our lineup. Um, she was injured at the end of basketball season, as most people know. So she's been helping us with some matches. Mm -hmm. Um, but sh obviously, she's doing rehab for six months and right. cannot play. Right. So those are the seniors. Mm -hmm. um, juniors, we have Caroline Grody, uh, Reina Ortiz, and Briseida Reyes. Our sophomores are Abigail Hill, who's with us today as well, and Phoebe Grody. And then our freshmen are Lena Leatherman, Jessica Lopez, Natalie Stewart, and Ann Stockman. Numbers where you want them to be? As far as players? As far as players. Well, I think it's a good number. It you is. don't want it too is. many. It's right. Too many. But hard to work with. Right, yeah. right. And I know from being involved, junior high program is going strong as well. Yes, I think there's eight eighth graders coming up. So, mm -hmm. you know, numbers probably will increase for us next year. Right. And coaches, I want you to talk. You guys can talk about your two players here that's with you. Kelly being a senior, let's start with her. And, of course, seniors are always – it's always great to have seniors and it's always sad to have seniors too because you have to see them leave the program well kelly's a gem to have she really is she's she's a leader on the team she's played since sixth grade mm -hmm. um, she's had to deal with her parents being coaches which is probably good <laughs> and hard and now she has us which are like secondary parents probably <laughs> to her um, kelly has been versatile she's agreed to try singles in the start of the season it kind of worked a little bit but we both agreed that probably doubles was better where she fit mm -hmm. and um, she's just a great girl to have on the team let's talk about Abigail a little bit no, I'll let Chris talk about <laughs> Well, you're her favorite parent, right? <laughs> yeah, that's, that's right, Tim. You heard that just a minute ago okay. firsthand. Uh, Abby's been uh, fantastic. She's, uh, you know, we had Megan, and they're two different. They have two different styles of play, sure. and uh, uh, but both uh, been fantastic. And Abby um, has a good work ethic, and uh, I, I, I'm tough on her, mm -hmm. and and. Uh, um, I continually tell her to move her feet, be consistent, and uh, and um, do the things that I think she needs to to do to win. And but I, I am pretty tough on her at mm -hmm. times. And and uh, but she listens. She's t and you know playing uh, basketball, mm -hmm. playing volleyball. Uh, she, you know, it's it's uh, she's used to it. She's right. used to somebody guiding her. You know, telling her right. what to do. But right. uh, but. No, it's been pretty, uh, very, very good it, for, for me. No, right. I, Tim, I, can, I don't know what <laughs> Abigail thinks, but <laughs> well, we'll, we'll find out in a minute anyway. All right, Natalie, pass the mic over to Kelly. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? I'm just great. Oh, well, good. Hey, let's talk about tennis. You've been playing since sixth grade? Yep, just about. Wow. What's, uh, what's your, uh, your, your favorite part of playing tennis? So I really like when it's like a close match mm -hmm. because it really gets me and Lena playing to the like level that we know we can play to. Right. Whereas if it's either we're getting completely killed mm -hmm. or we're killing them, it's not really as much fun because we don't really go to our full potential. I, I ask this to every time I talk to a, a, a player that plays doubles. How do you do it? I mean, I, I would be <laughs> running over people on the court. Um, it took a little bit of figuring things out because I did start off playing singles at the beginning, the beginning of the year. Right. So it took me and Lena a couple games to like get used to each other. But then it really, it falls back on our strengths of she's really a lot better at the net than I am, and I'm a little bit better back. So mm. we like complement each other really well. Right. And me and Lena, we've grown. Our friendship's grown, our teamwork has grown, mm -hmm. so it's 
it's a good are, are you are you are you um um, I don't know if surprise is the word to use. Are you are you pleased with the with how you guys have bonded on the on the tennis court? Yeah, it's always interesting having a freshman senior duo, mm -hmm. but I think it's a really good um, kind of thing to have right. because she gets all that experience and she gets and one doubles isn't necessarily an easy right um, spot to play sometimes, but I think that again with us working together we've learned how to work together mm -hmm. and so i think it's been really good it, it helps too that she's kind of tall yeah she is kind of <laughs> tall <laughs> it, that always helps a little bit uh what's what's your um your strength in, in tennis so um again i normally play back a little bit more mm -hmm. and I'm not super consistent all the time. I try to be. That's what Mr. Hill comes to the fence and he's like, consistency. Yeah. I'm like, all right. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I think a lot of it is I'm smart with my shots, mm -hmm. or at least I try to be for the most part. Mm -hmm. And so it's trying to hit it where they're not. Right. So I think that's <clears throat> something that I'm relatively good at. All right. Let's talk about a weakness. Um, the net. Yeah. <laughs> it's a little rough sometimes. <laughs> It's a little overwhelming sometimes. Yeah, a little bit fast reflexes that I don't necessarily have all mm -hmm. the time. Right. So it just, it takes a little to get me to like be aggressive at the net. Right. What about uh, after high school, where are you going to college? I'm going to Western Kentucky. And studying? English. All right. Well, thanks for being here this yeah, morning. Thank you. All right. Abigail, switch over seats. Good morning. Good morning. How was Abigail today? I'm wonderful. How are you? I'm doing great now. <laughs> as you guys are in here talking tennis. Let's talk about you. You've been playing tennis since what? You were probably about one? <laughs> <laughs> uh, not quite. <laughs> um, I probably started when I was around seven. Mm -hmm. Yeah, did, did, right you, did you have a choice whether you wanted to play tennis or not? <laughs> yes. <laughs> At first, I really didn't enjoy tennis. Mm -hmm. And then... One day I just went out on the courts with my father and we just started hitting. I was like, ooh, this is really fun. <laughs> what's what's the, the motivation for you? What's the driving motivation? What do you play, number one singles? Yes. What's what's the motivation for you? Um, well, I've said this once before. I went to play tennis in college. Mm -hmm. So, and having two parents that played in college and I want to continue that tradition, I guess yeah. is the right word. Right. And I that's what really motivates me the most okay I'm this is kind of a, a mellow way to ask but wha <laughs> how 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 difficult is it having your parents as coaches um it's fairly difficult because obviously they're harder on me than other people and mm. they know what my potential is and sometimes I don't rise to the occasion all the right, time right. so it's a little difficult just you, but you 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 weather the storm, right? <laughs> right. I guess. Yeah. I mean, you you make it. Is dad harder on you than mom? Oh, for sure. For sure. For sure. And, yeah. And do, you, do you expect that? Yes. 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 Okay. <laughs> so you play number one single, so it's all about you. Yeah, it's it's tough. Uh, so you're gonna get the other team's best every night. Yes. And and how do you mentally prepare to do that? Well, I just tell myself to. And my dad tells me this too, to be consistent and move my feet and just be prepared for anything mm -hmm. because you don't know what you're walking into. And usually when I play better people, I play my better tennis. Right. It's just usually what happens when I play. So I'm just keep a yeah. positive attitude and just go in there just thinking, let's do this. Let's. Kelly mentioned that when the match is close, she it's better. It's it's a lot more intense and kind of she's more engaged. Is that kind of the same for you? Yeah, it gets my adrenaline pumping because mm -hmm. I want to hit it harder but keep it in play too, yeah. <laughs> um, and I want to win. So it yeah makes me. What's your strongest part of your tennis game? Ooh, um, <laughs> probably speed on my ball because mm -hmm. I. I can hit it pretty hard. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and Dad likes that. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Mom, maybe not so much. Uh, <laughs> it's not very consistent <laughs> sometimes. So. <laughs> sometimes a lob is better. <laughs> what's your What's your your weakest part of your game? Probably consistency. Yeah. And I hate to say it, but he right. always tells me to be consistent and move my feet and keep it in play and stay in those points. How How do you How do you be more consistent? Is that a mental thing? 
Yes and no. Uh -huh. um, just telling myself, stay in this point, win this point, win this game, win mm -hmm. this match, and it'll be over. Just yeah, one yeah. point at a time. Yeah. And that's hard to do. Y yeah, <laughs> yes it is. Sometimes. <laughs> uh, so you're only a sophomore, so you're not even making college plans yet, right? No. Let's talk sectional real quick. Uh, how many teams in your sectional? Five teams. So it's you guys. Southwestern. Southwestern Madison. Madison. Greensburg. Greensburg Jennings County. County. Taking you out of the equation, favorite? I would say Greensburg. Mm -hmm. They beat us 5-0. Yeah. They beat Southwestern 5-0. I don't. I think Madison was 5-0 or 4-1. I'm not mm -hmm. sure. Um, so I definitely would say Greensburg. So taking them out of the equation and putting you guys back in, everybody else then pretty pretty competitive with each other, you think? Um, I would think that Jennings County and Southwestern are um, – They've got some depth, you mm -hmm. know, in their lineup for sure. sure. Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, it would take a, a pretty good effort in some areas to overcome that. But right. uh, um, Greensburg does have a very solid number one player, and so uh, that's what gives them kind of a distinct advantage. Sure. But Jennings County and Southwestern, I mean, uh, I know Southwestern went uh, several of those matches with Greensburg, I think, were – went three sets sure. so they've definitely mm -hmm. got a, a shot you right know? and Tim I just wanted to kind of go back and say one sure. thing. with Kate Grody not being in our lineup you know that really that one player having everybody move up mm -hmm. one slot and then right. having some seniors graduate that's right. been a challenge right. this year and I I was looking over at Natalie's uh, notes she made but that was really made I mean one player in a seven person lineup mm -hmm. really makes a difference yeah and losing Kate was a uh, right you know when Natalie texted me that night that she hurt she tore her ACL that I thought oh that that was my fear right that was one of my you know that she was going to injure herself so yeah. you know but but and, and that's I mean that's the good and bad way to look at it. Of course, yeah. you don't want to to lose a, a player with the caliber of Kate, but on the other hand, it gives other people chances to, it, to get it, experience. Sure, it does. Yes, and you know that's that's yeah, the hard way. That's, but that's you have to do it. Right. Next man, next woman up. <laughs> that's know, right. So. That's so. that's absolutely right. Well, and as you said earlier, um, you know. You, you never know what's going to happen. You play your best match, and, you know, things things right. could happen good in, sure. in the sectional side. Yeah, and, of course, that's what you hope for. So um, anything else before we wrap up? Everybody good? You guys yeah, I just kind of wanted to add that our number one and number two singles have had – they have winning records. Mm -hmm. um, they are very consistent players overall. So they have been, like, the solid – force of our team right and then one doubles has really come along mm -hmm. um and i also wanted to mention um there's two freshmen that play before practice after practice show a lot of dedication um jessica lopez and lena leatherman they really show a drive outside of practice and we can see that as coaches so i just kind of want to give a shout sure. out to a couple of them too yeah absolutely uh, we appreciate you coming in this morning best of luck in sectional All thank right. you very thanks much for, having for having us all right thank you that is, again, uh, Chris and Natalie Hill talking Shaw Girls Tennis this morning. And we want to say thanks to senior Kelly Hesse and sophomore Abigail Hill for coming in this morning. We'll do it again next week live from McDonald's on Madison Hilltop. We may do Shaw softball next week. We haven't worked those details out, but we'll see. Thanks to A.J. Bramer in studio. And until next week, live from McDonald's on Madison Hilltop, I'm Tim Torrance on Works 96.7.